So I got back in from Computex a couple of days ago. I needed a bit of R&R &R and I was seriously just burnt out after that trip. I think I did in total like 17 videos, but also filmed another two, which I finished off when I got back here. But people are wondering, how do I pack for these events? There's a few questions that run under the scenes, which I'm gonna quickly address now. But first off, international travel and how it works with fitting so many used parts in that suitcase is a two-fold process. First of all, you need to use your clothes to actually cushion the parts. Second of all, you need a pretty big suitcase. With these two powers combined, you can be fitting in all these parts like I've done here on the desk and still manage to have a good trip. Now, why would anyone go directly to a country to hunt for used parts? I don't know. I don't book a plane ticket and go, hey, I'm going international just to do a parts hunt. That would be stupid in terms of price performance. But why I do that is because I piggyback these parts hunts off of events like Computex, for example, or if last year when I was in Vietnam for the uh, Galax overclocking tournament, I did a parts hunt there. And so how it works is I request the companies to send me a couple of days earlier and then I'm happy to cover the events for them. And that way you guys and me, we all get that used price performance hustle going on. And also the companies get taken care of when I do the events. And I'm more than happy to do that for a plane ticket and accommodation. But on top of that, if you guys are traveling to a certain location and you're like me and you love doing a bit of used price performance, then it's always a thing that you can keep in the back of your mind. For instance, if you want to enjoy a particular area overseas and you want to do something on the side like I'm doing, then these are the methods you can follow and you can come back with a little kitty in your suitcase and hopefully make a bit of money after the trip's done. And of course, you've enjoyed yourself. If you want to learn how to make a spaceman jacket, then today's video sponsor is probably not for you. But if you want to learn the fine arts of graphic design, freelance, entrepreneurial ship, music production, film and video, then Skillshare has an online learning community with thousands of classes and you can get a premium membership with unlimited access for as little as $10 a month. Now for me personally, I've been using this to help improve my social media as I'm an introvert and that's one thing I struggle with. I'm learning just how to better communicate across social media in general. But the best thing about today's video sponsor Skillshare is if you use the link in the description below, you'll get two months of premium access for free. What are you guys waiting for? Put that link below for you. Let's get back to the hustle. But what we've got right here on the desk is essentially 19 used components. And the good thing is, all these components are in working condition. They're absolutely fine. I've tested them all. So they make it back through the flight okay. Now, in terms of customs, I really never get pulled over. Um, I mean, when you're going through customs, they do x-ray your stuff. If they find there's a problem, they'll usually just question me and I'll be like, yeah, I picked up some computer parts. And I just tell them, this is sort of like a passion of mine. I love used price performance hustle and they sort of understand. They never really take it any step further. It's just computer parts. At worst, they'll just pick a component out of my suitcase, take a look at it and go, yeah, this guy's absolutely fine, keep going. But anyway, besides making a heap of value out here on the table, I'm also gonna take you guys behind the scenes a little bit and show you what a normal operation in the week of Tech Yes City is like in terms of making even more value. So get your used price performance capes on, strap on in and let's have some fun. So here it is, clean slate. We have cleaned off the Tech Yes desk here, but from now I'm going to go pay a visit to a local computer store called X Gaming Systems. This is King of the Coast's own operation now, which is built up over the last two years. But how it is is someone traded in a PC they bought off him and my sort of objective was to do a trade-in value that he would then buy back off me, if that makes any sense. So we're gonna go take that computer over to his shop now and go see what's cracking. But also on that note, I did buy an RX 570 off him that was faulty, so I'm gonna go get that replaced too. So a little bit of a midday hustle here.
So we just got back now and we got the replacement RX 570, also got the 500 in pineapples. That's what we call an Australian 50. And we got two cases here that Kevin no longer wanted. He said they didn't fit the LED bling. And I said, that's not a problem around Tech yes City. They're more than welcome to stay here. I'll find them a new home. But basically with Kevin over the last two years, he's gone from a garage to, or if you're on the Gold Coast, we do say garage. And he's gone from there and built up a whole business in his garage and then essentially now made a local business at a storefront. And it was crazy to see all the development and progress he's made. And it's actually crazy because I haven't seen him for literally like five months. And in that time, he's just been going crazy. He's even got an LED setup for taking photos of the builds. So I guess that thing of LED selling PCs, he's taken it to a whole new level where he's got the RGB desk that can match the color of the build. But at the same time, he is making a whole business that's thriving off of used price performance, which was really crazy to see. So that's what uh, Kevin and X Gaming Systems, his company, has been doing over the last five months. But with that aside, why don't we start making something out of these two little brand new cases here? Well, they're not brand new yet. They are used, but I'm gonna turn them into brand new. So it's now the next morning and I got a little bit carried away last night. I built this first one up and I'm like, well, why as well build the second one up? And the thing about these PCs is why I'm not doing dedicated videos to them, like in terms of a usual price performance rig on the channel is that I don't really know how to price these up because both these rigs here have kind of a same thing in common. And that's that I've got two cases that were pretty much going in the bin. I got them gifted to me. And then also we've reused the graphics card that's come back to life. And in this case, we've got a CPU cooler that I got for free. Use that. We got a hard drive for like, I think this one cost $8. And then we got a motherboard in uh, Taiwan that was $10. A power supply that otherwise would have been chucked in the bin. We've got an RX 570 that was replaced. And so you can start to see that this one here is going to literally cost next to nothing to put together. I did manage to chuck in an SSD, which is going to raise the value of the rig and put 16 gigabytes of RAM in and an i7-2600. So this one has it all in terms of performance specs, but it doesn't really have the bling. But that's not to worry because, you know, not everyone is after LEDs, or at least I'm going to be testing that uh, by testing that and selling it a little bit cheaper than I otherwise would sell something of similar spec with LEDs inside. But this one right here, again, we've got 
the graphics card that's been sort of tech yes loved and then it's brought back to life got a cooler that i had lying around eight gigabytes of ram a motherboard that we picked up in taiwan for around 15 bucks and then we got a hard drive 500 gigabyte hard drive that was uh, pretty much taken out of another OEM system. And then we have this power supply here, which I picked up on a deals hunt for around 40 Aussie dollars, I believe. If you haven't seen that, I'll put the link up here. But you may also notice I did add a DVD drive in this case, and that was simply just to fill out the front panel here so it doesn't look too bizarre and the whole system's completed. But when it comes down to it, these two cases were cases that were just filthy. No one wanted them. A lot of the parts inside were dirty, filthy but we've managed to bring them back into something that is working as usual, 100%, looks really good, performs really good, and sounds really good. Now, I have installed Windows on both these machines, so they do boot up absolutely fine. I've just got to run them through stress tests. But another thing to come out of this video is really cool in my opinion, and that's just reusing old parts. I do tell you guys, you should never really chuck out a good part, especially if it's got potential. And this cooler here is a lot better than these newer coolers that they put on their CPUs. There's a lot more metal inside. I believe the fan is a lot better too and how it spins up. And with that, you've now got a cooler that's going to cool down an i7-2600 absolutely fine. In fact, these coolers were pretty good to the point where you could even overclock on them back in the day on the dual cores. So the fact that this board had LGA-775 support, I did want to utilize that and get some value out of it, and I certainly have. But also other parts in this build do come together to synergize the whole total package. So do let us know what you think of this rig. And then this last one here, of course, we're just putting something together with an i5-3470 and a 7970, and it's gonna perform really well, even at 1080p, and still get decent performance. But the real funny thing about the 7970 is back when it was released, I think at the end of 2011, it had that three gigabytes of VRAM, and people thought it was too much for what was at the time. But fast forward to this day, in 2019, that three gigabytes of VRAM is really paying off for this card, considering it's lasted all that time and it hasn't been heavily used. Because over seven years of straight GPU usage will do some funny things to a GPU. But in this case, looks like it's looking okay. I mean, the cap's checked out. I think it just had a little bit of a problem with some thermal paste over some of the traces. But hopefully both these rigs are good to go once I stress test them and put them on the market they should make some people happy on a budget. So closing out this vlog, you can see that around Tech Yes City and even guys like Kevin from X Gaming Systems, you can just use a lot of parts that otherwise would get chucked out in the rubbish and you can utilize them to make magic happen. In the case of Kevin, he had things like office PCs going on where he's utilizing those i3s, the second and third gen i3s, and even throwing in an SSD, which costs around about 19 USD. I think you can get them in Australia for as low as 25 Aussie dollars. And so if you chuck that in the system, and even if you charge like $80 for it, you're still gonna be making profit because a lot of those parts, especially in the case of the motherboards and the CPUs, you're not gonna be putting them in gaming PCs because you're just not going to get the value. Generally nowadays, people do not want i3s. And I've found this out the hard way when I even tried to sell an i3-8100 which is better than an i5-3470, for example, but because it had the i3 logo on it, no one wanted to buy it. It was crazy. Pretty much for gaming PCs nowadays, people don't want Pentiums or i3s, but you can still use them in Office PCs where people just want to use Excel, for instance, or browse the web. They're not gonna need anything more than two cores, and especially two cores for threads. And if you couple in an SSD with it, it's gonna actually be quite a fast Office PC where retailers are charging in excess, at least in Australia, more than 500 Aussie dollars for something of similar performance. So in closing out today's vlog, you guys see that I just like to create value out of literally everything, especially when people otherwise discard that and they think it's not worth anything to them personally. They just think it's trash, it's otherwise should go in the garbage, but you can then reutilize that, retweak it, and then make it into something that someone would find very useful, and also you can make a little bit of bank on the side. So it's something that I really enjoy doing. I know a lot of you guys out there and a lot of people around me here on the Gold Coast enjoy doing this too. It really is a cool hobby to have, a cool passion. But with that aside, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And if you did, then be sure to hit that like button for us. But also, let us know in the comments section below what was your favorite of these two PCs, or if you have any questions about anything else featured in today's vlog, then be sure to drop a comment in the comments section below. I mean, some of these PCs, man, 
they just get tech yes loving and it gets administered pretty damn quickly just that light coating of multi-purpose spray on that build phew, brings it up looking schmick and beautiful and with that aside i'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon but also if you want two months free premium access to Skillshare, links in the description below. That's today's video sponsor. Two months free, got nothing to lose, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.